Hello everybody, this is Jack from Tefluency.com. Welcome to you if this is your first time here. If it is, then please either subscribe to me on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, or like my Facebook page. I help English learners reach a high level of English. In this lesson, we're going to talk about morning routines and daily routines. And I'm going to talk about my routine and also my routine in the past because this is going to give you some really good listening practice based on different routines, based on the words and phrases we use when talking about routines. Now also, if you are new here, then look in the description and click the link to get my book. You can download this for free or you can simply go to tofluency.com slash book and you'll be able to download that for free. And then also take my test, my quiz on phrasal verbs. There are 10 questions that are going to test your knowledge on phrasal verbs. What I'm going to do is I am going to bring up my Facebook page on my phone so that I can read the comments because know that we are doing this live. This is a live lesson and it is currently five past two on Tuesday today. It's Tuesday today. So I'm going to bring up my comments. If you are here live, please say hello to me. I want to um, see what everyone's doing today and how everyone is. And if you're watching the replay too, please um, comment in the section below as well. So we have Said is here, Susanna, Abigail and Oleg and Susanna. Carrie has joined. Carrie is saying hi. Good to have you, Carrie. Carrie is one of the moderators now for my group, Learn English with Jack. And I'll leave a link to that group later. Gabriella is from Switzerland, if I recognize that flag correctly. And we've got Arena here as well. Beta is here from Poland, Said from Kurdistan, um, Sreta from Thailand, Elena is here. Thank you everyone for joining. If you're just joining or if you're watching the replay, click the thumbs up button. Give me a, a thumbs up either on YouTube or on Facebook. So in this lesson today, we're going to talk about routines. I had a few lesson requests um, I'm just going to move my microphone a little bit closer. I had a, a few lesson requests today, but I decided to focus on routines. Um, the main reason is because my routine is changing a lot at the moment, and it's going to change again in a few weeks, and I'll explain why in a moment. But yeah, my routine is constantly changing. And this is one of the first lessons that you have at a language school or when you take an English course, every time it's always, what's your daily routine? What do you do in the morning? What do you do in the afternoon, etc." But what I'm going to do in this lesson is talk about my routine and also talk about what mine was like in the past. So we can practice a little bit in terms of the present and also talking about the past. And I'm also going to predict what my routine is going to be like in the future because as I said, things are going to change. I'm just going to read some more of the comments. Again, know if you are watching this replay, then people are watching live. Please like my page or subscribe if you are new. We have Elena is here. Alexandra is here. Physiotherapist Caroline Costa from Brazil is here. Fantastic. Gabriella saying yes that is Switzerland. Elena is here. Uh, Ludmilla is here as well. Made one mistake on my quiz. Don't worry about it. Learn from those mistakes. And Valentina is here as well. So yeah the, the quiz on phrasal verbs. You guys you loved it. I really enjoyed the feedback on this. Um, 10 questions. Testing your knowledge of phrasal verbs, testing to see how well you know phrasal verbs. So thank you for those who have already taken this quiz. And as I said before, if you haven't done so yet, there is a link in the description 
so you can do that okay morning routines daily routines so as i said before my routine has changed dramatically over the years and it has changed due to a number of factors now i'm going to talk about a time when i had a very lazy morning and this was when i was at university so when i was at university i used to stay up very late and get up very late as well so i used to stay up until 2 3 a.m maybe later on most nights i was either studying or I was partying, or I was reading, watching TV. I stayed up late when I was at university. And this meant that I got up late as well. So I got up late when I was at university. And my morning routine was very simple. I wake up, okay? And I'll use this in the past. I used to wake up, get something to eat, and then go straight to university because most of my lessons were around 10, 11, or 12. They started a little bit later. So I used to just quickly get up and then go as quickly as possible. Now, things have changed dramatically because um, let's just have a look. Abigail says, you were a night owl when you were at university, weren't you? Fantastic, yeah. I made a lesson on this. Thank you, Abigail, for sharing. I made a lesson on this, the difference between um, being a night owl and also being a morning person. So I was a night owl at university. I stayed up late. I got up late. At the moment, I'm waking up a little bit later than usual. And this is because my wife isn't teaching right now. But when she was teaching at a middle school, we used to wake up at 6 a.m. every day. And sometimes my son would wake up earlier than that too. So sometimes my son, he used to wake up at 5.30, sometimes 4.30. So we had to get up with him. So when my wife was at school, she woke up at 6. We all woke up at 6. And my mornings were quite good fun, to be honest. Now, what happened was this. My son, his daycare started at nine. So from six to nine, I was looking after my son to look after someone. So I was looking after my son. And we used to just have a great time. We played soccer. We put on music. We danced in the morning, had some breakfast. He had a bath. We got changed. And then I walked over to his daycare to take him to daycare so those mornings were great the problem was after three hours with my son i felt really tired so it was difficult for me to work it was difficult for me to start working to make videos to do these live lessons because i was so tired but since my wife finished school finished teaching it's been great we wake up around seven. This morning was earlier. This morning was about six. But generally speaking, we wake up around seven. We both get up with my son. We go downstairs. We have a, a lazy breakfast, okay? We're not rushing. We have a lazy breakfast. We play, we read books. And then I come to work around 8.30 or 9 a.m. So my morning routine at the moment is fantastic because I'm not stressed. Both my wife and I are helping my son and I'm not in a big rush to leave the door. Because I work for myself, I don't have to come to work at a specific time. Um, before I go on, I'm just gonna read some comments. Lamilla says, to stay up late is bad for your health. Yeah. Um, it can be. I think it's better to get a good night's sleep. We try to focus on sleeping as much as possible. Chung is here from Vietnam. Edna says, I usually get up at 4.30 a.m. every day. Now, this is a good comment. You said, it is so tired. But what we're saying here is, I am so tired or it's tiring. Okay. To be tired, I am tired. 
or to explain a situation, it's tiring. Another good example of this is I can say, oh, I'm bored, I'm bored, I feel bored. Whereas I can talk about a lecture and say this lecture is boring, that lesson was boring, I'm describing something else. So that's a good difference to know. Lord Miller says, it's true, looking after small children is fun and tiring at the same time. Exactly. When you have young children, it's both fun and it's both tiring. It is really tiring. It makes you feel very tired. So this is another good example. It's tiring, I'm tired. Okay, it's tiring, I'm tired. Now, that's normally what happens, okay? We wake up at seven, we have a lazy breakfast, we play, and then I go to work at a certain time. But there are certain days when my son is sick, or my wife can't sleep, or I can't sleep, and things are a little bit different. So sometimes I stay at home a little bit longer so my wife can sleep longer too, so that she can have a lie-in. So sometimes it is like that. Now, um, what I'm going to do here, uh, actually someone just has a really interesting question and I'll read it. Um, this is Galmazan says, to me it's so hard to get up early. Can you give me some advice? I'm 20. When I was 20, as I said before, I was at university and I couldn't sleep before 12. I never went to sleep before 12. So maybe you just need to wait until you're older. But <laughs> some advice for you, um, if you wanna wake up early, you have to get into the habit of doing it. That's what I have found from my own experience. And this is a good question for you guys to answer. What advice do you have to anyone who wants to wake up earlier? What should they do? But for me, it's about getting into the habit, making it a routine. So you wake up at a certain time and then you do the same again the next day and the next day and the next day. And then soon it will become a routine. Also, it helps if you wake up and you're excited about doing something. You're excited about getting up to do something. For me, I'm so excited to get up to play with my son and then to start work because I love what I do. So for me, I have a very strong reason to get out of bed, a very strong reason to get out of bed. Um, quick question as well to make, uh, to give you a simple question for those watching live, what time do you normally wake up? What time do you normally wake up? Now, what I'm going to talk about now is something that is going to change our routine. And I don't think I have shared this on either Facebook or on YouTube, but my wife and I are expecting another baby, okay? So we are going to have another baby in about four weeks. That is the due date. Now, this is a good difference between British and American English. Okay, due date or due date, due or do. So this is D-U-E. And this is the date when the baby is expected to come. Okay, so it's the, it's the date that we expect the baby to come on. And that is in four, five weeks, something like that. So very soon, we are going to have a new baby. And this is when the morning routine is going to be completely different. In fact, our daily routine is going to be completely different. So I am expecting some very, very big changes coming up soon to my routine, my wife's routine, my son's routine, and it's going to be very different for us. So I can talk about this in the future. I can say, I'll probably have to wake up earlier, okay? So in a few weeks, I'll have to wake up earlier. I'll also have to do more at home. 
I'll have to help out more at home. So I won't be able to come to the office every day, especially for the first couple of weeks or so. So I'll have to stay at home, I'll have to help out. I won't be able to come to the office as early. I won't be able to come to the office as often. So you can see here, I'm using I will. And I can also use going to. I'm going to have to stay at home more often. You know, I'm going to have to help more. So what I'm doing here is I'm talking about something in the future and I'm talking about my daily routine and my daily schedule in the future as well. Um, I'm just gonna go back to the comment sections. Everyone's saying congratulations, thank you so much. Um, this is very, very kind of you. Um, I'm just gonna read some comments now. 6.30, so Gabriella wakes up at 6.30. Lumilla says, it's just a matter of habit. Great comment, when to go to bed and when to get up. It's just a matter of habit, a matter of routine. Because if you, if you try to go to bed earlier without waking up early, it's going to be very difficult. Um, Julio, or Julio says, I would like to say thanks a lot for every day sharing knowledge with us. It's my pleasure. Um, Ahmad is here as well. He wakes up at 6 a.m. Renats wakes up at 8, 10 a.m. I would love that. Gabriella says, congratulations, thank you. Gali Mazan says, 1 p.m. So, you are waking up very, very late, Gali Mazan. So, I would start trying to wake up at 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then get up at 5 a.m. It's fantastic waking up early. Valentina says, I usually wake up at 7. Susanna, I wake up at 5 because my work day starts at 6. It's very early. Um, Abigail says, congratulations. Thank you very much. And she says, bad news. If you're tired now, you're going to be three times as tired then. But it's amazing. Lumilla shared due date here. Thank you so much. Akmal wakes up at 6 a.m. Um, you need at least 21 days to change a bad habit, Chung says. This is true. Yeah, there's different research, isn't there? Some people say 21, 30. There was another one that said over 60 days as well. Um, Gabriella says, great news. Thank you. Carrie says about 6.30, I don't need to use an alarm clock anymore to wake up. Great sentence. So I don't need to use an alarm clock anymore to wake up. Um, we don't set an alarm these days. Great uh, phrase here, to set an alarm. I, I asked my wife, did you set an alarm? Did you set an alarm? Bassam and Lumilla says, congratulations, good news, thank you. Marta says, I normally start my day at 5.50. Um, on the weekend, I have a lie-in. I have a lie-in. Elena and Monica says, good news, thank you so much. Mara says, I'm not the one to give advice because <laughs> you're struggling with that too. I feel more productive at night. I wake up at 8 or 9 a.m., but I'm still on a summer break. By the way, congrats. And Mara says here, BTW. And this is short for by the way. Great phrase to know. Gabriella asks a great question. Is your son looking forward to the baby? He's very excited. I don't think he understands exactly what it's going to be like. And we don't either. You know, you get used to having a son. You get used to the changes. He is now three. And then things are going to get very, very different. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for those comments. So just to summarize, talking about daily routines, okay, and morning routines. And there's one more thing I want to share about this, but I'll give a summary first. So at the moment, I'm waking up at seven. Um, you can talk about this in the present simple or the present continuous, especially if it's more of a temporary thing. At the moment, I'm waking up at seven. I normally wake up at seven. And then I spend some time with my son. We play, we have breakfast, and then I come to the office. Sometimes, like yesterday, I stay at home and work from home for a little bit. 
so then I can spend some time with my wife or with my son and, and multitask a little bit. Um, in the past, I used to stay up very late and I used to get up very late. So my morning routine was very rushed. I woke up, I got out of bed, I got something quick to eat, some quick breakfast. I usually had a cup of tea and then I went to university. And then in the future, things are going to be very different because of our new baby and I'll be spending or I'm going to spend or I'll spend, I'll keep it simple, I'll use will, I'll spend more time at home, I'll be helping a lot more and I won't be able to come to the office as often, especially at first. Okay, so that's a really good summary of morning routines. Um, fantastic, I'm just going to read a couple more comments. Saeed says, I'm looking forward to getting married. Congratulations. And Julie says, I wake up at 4.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. It depends on shifts. Okay, I got very confused then. But Julie works shifts. And to work shifts means that you have different times when you work. So Julie might work an early shift or she might work a late shift. And if she works an early shift, then she wakes up early. Thank you very much, Mohammed, as well for that kind comment. So one more thing I want to share about this. And this is something that has become very popular. And people talk about how you start your day determines what the rest of your day is going to be like. So if you have a really good routine in the morning, then the rest of the day is usually going to be good as well. And the key here is that we all have different responsibilities. We all have different lives and jobs and families and everything else that we have to do. And we might have to wake up really early or we might have to be somewhere at a specific time. So whenever people talk about improve your morning routine, think about how you can adapt this to yourself, how you can um, make this specific to you. Now, when we're talking about learning English, what I recommend is this. Do something in English early in the morning. Do something in English in the morning. I actually made a video on this where I talked about waking up 20 minutes earlier to do something in English. And I'll leave a link to that video in the comment section later. So waking up 20 minutes earlier to do something in English. And the benefit of doing this two main things. The first thing is this. You actually do something in English. You do something at the start of the day before anything else comes in the way. Before your job starts, before people call you, before the world starts and things get really busy. So it ensures that you do something every day in English. Now you might not have to wake up earlier to do this. Just think about your routine and how you can do something in the morning within the first hour. So it helps you get into the habit of doing English and it helps you do something in English before you get really busy. Now the second benefit of doing this is that when you do something in the morning, something like studying English or listening to something in English, then you're more likely to do it again later. You're more likely to do it again later. Because you wake up, you do something, and then you're in that English mind frame. You're thinking about English. So doing something in the morning means that you're more likely to do it again later. You're more likely to do something else in English later because it's in your head. It's in your head. So there are two strong reasons to do something within the first hour after waking up, to do something in English. And I know that when I have a, a lovely morning, you know, the, the perfect morning, then I have such a better day. 
So days when I'm really stressed and I'm rushing and, you know, things aren't working very well. And maybe my wife is sick and maybe, you know, something happens and I know the rest of the day isn't as good. But when I wake up and I have a fun morning, I play, maybe I read, I, you know, do something that's productive, then the rest of the day works really well. Fantastic. I'm just going to read a couple of comments before I go. Um, this is so, so many great comments. Elena says, before we talk about it, my shift lasts 24 hours, by the way. Wow, that's incredible. Um, Mohammed says, yes, I totally agree. Thank you. That's great to know. Valentina, a good beginning makes a good ending. Mara says, I always check my social media in the morning, which is in English. This is such a good example. It doesn't have to be intensive study. It could just be reading social media posts in English or listening to some music in English while you get ready. It could be anything. There's no need to put pressure on yourself to make it really intensive. Um, Valentina says, I'm lucky because I speak, read and write in English as I'm an English teacher at school. So you're constantly <laughs> thinking in English. So he says, I often watch your video specifically about phrasal verbs in the morning. This is another good example. Watch one of my videos on Facebook or on YouTube. Usually the videos are three, five, six minutes. Just commit to one of those videos every morning and then continue for the rest of the day. Um, Lumilla says, to improve my English, I watch Hard Talk on BBC with Stephen Sacker. It's my evening routine. I love it. It's getting those routines. Abigail, I used to listen to BBC News podcasts on my way to work. Do you mean I usually, I usually listen or I used to in the past? Let me know, Abigail. Um, Tarao says, I was late again to your live lesson. No worries. Learning English during the morning is much better than any other time of the day. Yep, it just get, get, gets you off to a great start. Great, great idiom here. Gets you off to a great start. Gets you off to a great start. It means that you have a fantastic start to the day and it helps for the rest of the time. Um, I really enjoy your videos. Could you make a video about reading books in English? For me, it's so difficult to do. Yeah, I do have a couple of videos on that. If you go to youtube.com slash to fluency, my YouTube channel, and then just search my videos for books or book. Books or book, one of the two. You should be able to find two or three videos where I talk about how to read in English and how to learn English through reading. Um, Mara says you can make a video on this idiom maybe. Mara, thank you for the suggestion. I might have to do that and then I can link it to this video. Well, everyone, I'm going to end it there. We've been going for 30 minutes nearly. So thank you again for being here. If you have found this useful, then please give it the thumbs up and please share it as well. Share it with anyone who would find it useful. Either post it on Facebook or maybe tag a friend in the comment section below and tell them to watch this lesson. And if you're new here, get my book to fluency.com slash book. There's a link in the description. It's a five-step plan for English fluency. Currently, you can download this for free. And then take my quiz on phrasal verbs. It's been a very popular quiz, and I think you're going to like it as well. So everyone, tomorrow morning, wake up, do something in English, and then comment on this video and tell me what you did. Okay, guys, I will see you in the next class and thank you again for being here. Bye, everyone.